Hey, hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. In this video, I'd like to show you how to combine SageMaker to train machine learning models and Fargate to deploy on fully managed containers. Okay, pretty cool combination. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to start from a Keras script and it's a, it's a simple script. I've used it before. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple CNN. Uh, that we train to classify images on the fashion MNIST dataset, okay, which is basically a drop-in replacement for MNIST. Same number of classes, same number of samples, etc. So the game here is to classify those images correctly in ten classes. So I'm using a script mode uh, script here, so passing hyperparameters and data set location, etc., as command arguments, downloading the dataset. Uh, building the different convolution blocks, training, and then uh, saving the model in TensorFlow serving format. So nothing, nothing strange. I mean, you've you've seen this example a few times, I guess. And uh, and although I'm I'm using Keras here, uh, what I'm going to show you is working with uh, TensorFlow and uh, and PyTorch and MXNet. Okay, so it's a it's a very generic way of training on SageMaker and deploying on Fargate. Okay, so let's get to work. So first, of course, I download the data set, um, upload it to S3. It's already split into training and validation. So I see my two S3 locations. As usual, I configure a SageMaker estimator. Uh, I use the TensorFlow one here, obviously, passing the location of the script, uh, training on one uh, P3 to Excel instance, so GPU instance. And I'm using TensorFlow 115 in Python 3 mode, right? And script mode as well. Okay, we've seen this a million times. Train, passing the location of the training set, the validation set. This trains for a few minutes. I get 92% accuracy. All good. Okay, so now I have a trained model in S3 and I can see its location here, okay? And remember, this has been saved in TensorFlow serving format. This is important. So let's just uh, save this location to an environment variable. And then I can copy that model artifact to my local machine. I'm, I'm using a notebook instance here, but you could use anything else. And then I extract the model artifact. Okay, and we can see this is indeed in TensorFlow serving format, okay? Uh, model name and model version. I'm extracting to this directory called test models because this is actually uh, one of my repos, okay? We can see, we can see it here. Um, this is one of my repos on GitLab, okay? Because obviously I want to push this new model to GitLab and that's where I'll fetch it to deploy it on my Fargate cluster, okay? So that's what's, that's why I'm doing it like, like that. Next step, uh, obviously, is to um, add and commit and push the model to that GitLab repo, okay? Um, so anywhere you run those commands is fine, just push it. And now we're good. So we have that model archived in GitLab, ready to be deployed. So the next step is to create our Fargate cluster. And this is the simplest thing because all it takes is this, call the create cluster API, give it a name, and that's it. Okay, Fargate is fully managed, uh, unlike, uh, unlike ECS and EKS, where you need to manage uh, clusters and instances, etc. Here, just create a cluster name, pretty much, and you're, you're good to go. Um, I'm gonna use the ECS CLI tool, which is a, a nice, uh, a nice way to uh, run commands on, on the cluster. Uh, so you can grab it on GitHub, uh, install it, just basically copy it to, uh, to your path and you're, you're done. And then I'm just saying, hey, I'm working with this Fargate demo cluster in EU West 1, okay, and, and that's it. This will be default for all the future commands. So the, the cluster is created here. Okay, and obviously nothing is running, uh, no task, nothing. Uh, so let's take care of that, okay? And I can use ECS CLI to check that indeed no tasks are running there. Now, uh, I said I would need a container. So 
what about that? So of course, I could go and build my own TensorFlow container. Um, you know, why not? But you know, laziness is a virtue. And we've done the, the heavy lifting for you. And this is called deep learning containers. So deep learning containers are containers for deep learning frameworks. So I think they're uh, appropriately named. Um, we have containers for TensorFlow, PyTorch, MXNet, different versions. They're available in plenty of regions. We have CPU and GPU versions, uh, etc., etc. So which one do we pick? Well, I trained on TensorFlow 115, so um, it's one of those, right? Um, Fargate doesn't support GPU instances for now, so uh, this one is out. And for a simple model like the one I'm using now, uh, CPU prediction should work <laughs> well enough. So this is the one I'm going to pick, okay? And we see the container name in ECR, our uh, Docker registry service. And those red bits are what you need to update. So here I'm using the EU West 1 region, so I'll replace that. I am not using the training container, I am using the inference container. So I replace this with inference. And I am not using Python 2, and neither should you because it's deprecated. So please, please start migrating. I'm going to use uh, Python 3.6 instead. Okay, so remember to update those bits. Otherwise, you'll end up uh, using the, the, the wrong container. Okay, so this is my container. It has everything I want. Now, how do I get this thing deployed? And how do I get my model loaded? Well, you need to write something called a task definition. And before you start screaming that, oh no, more JSON, this is really, really simple. So what do we have here? Well, of course, we have the name of the image, okay? So that's the one I showed you in EU West 1 for inference and Python 3.6, okay? So just copy paste the right image. Um, what's the entry point for this? Well, the entry point will be this create uh, a local directory, clone my repo with the models to that uh, directory, and then fire up TensorFlow Serving, which is already installed in the container, uh, using these ports on uh, my model. Okay, and uh, just pass the version you want, and, um, and in my artifact, there's only one version anyway, and, and where the base path uh, is for that model. Okay, so that's super, super easy. You can just really cut and paste uh, this stuff and reuse it with your own containers, right? Uh, you can set memory and CPU uh, allocations for those if you want. Here, it's a quick demo, so I'm not really paying any attention to this, but you, in production, obviously, you should. And now, this section is particularly important. Uh, it's about opening ports for your container. If you don't do that, then you won't be able to uh, send predictions to your model. So that's going to be a problem. Uh, make sure for TensorFlow serving, you open 8500 and 8501, which are the default ports. These are the ones we use here. Okay, so open ports accordingly. And the last bit is you need uh, CloudWatch logs, uh, log group to, uh, to store logs for the containers. So uh, I created it previously. It's again one simple API. Um, it's it's not nothing uh, you can't handle. Okay, make sure it's in the right region. I mean the obvious stuff. Okay, so that's the task definition. Okay, what's the image you want to run? What do you want to do inside of it? What are open ports? Uh, where where do you log? Right, easy. Okay, so we're good. We can move on. So we need to register this task definition, which really means you know, store it somewhere in the uh, in the Fargate backend, so that we can use it to get uh, start uh, task going. Okay. So you need to call this once, of course, to create it, and you need to call it again every time you update the file. But there's no need to call this API every single time. If the file hasn't changed, then it's uh, you know it won't hurt, but nothing happens. Okay. Um, Every time you update the uh, task definition, you'll see this version number uh, being bumped, okay? And this is important. So that's the name, right? And this is the version. And we're gonna need both, so pay attention to this. Okay, 
So the task definition has been created. So now we can run a task, okay? And I'm just gonna use this uh, simple API, run task, cluster name, which task definition do we need? Okay, and here's the version again. So this is the one you wanna pay attention to. Otherwise, uh, you, know, you, you, you might be running old versions and it's not gonna have the desired effect. Um, this is launched on Fargate, and that means we need to pass a network configuration. So uh, not going too deep here, but you can use different network configurations on Fargate. Here I'm keeping it super simple, and I'm launching that task in one of my subnets uh, with a simple security group. Okay, um, you can look at the uh, Fargate doc for this. And after a few seconds, I can see my task is running, right? And it's probably still running. Yes, um, and that means the container, the deep learning container, a reference in the image has been pulled to the cluster and, uh, and it's been started and the entry point has been invoked and hopefully my model is running in there. Okay, and I can see the IP for that task and the port. Okay, so it looks fine. So now the only thing left is to build a URL for this uh, TensorFlow serving endpoint. Okay, and they have a well-defined uh, format as you would expect. So you know, IP or host name, whatever you use, port number, and then V1 models slash one, column predict. Okay, so that's the URL for that model. And now I can basically grab some samples, some random samples from the validation data set. Okay, and let's run this, there we go. And I can build a prediction request. Okay, so this needs to be uh, in JSON format. Okay, and once again, this is the uh, format of the payload for TensorFlow serving, so make sure you respect that this is absolutely standard right this is not uh, Fargate or deep learning containers doing anything weird if you work with TensorFlow 7 this is the way it's supposed to work and then just post and you can see I'm using the standard uh, uh, requests library to do this okay so it is truly a standard HTTP <laughs> endpoint okay and I'm posting that data to the URL I'm uh, loading the response which is JSON again and printing it out. So we use 10 samples. So we see 10 vectors of 10 probabilities. Okay, we have a, a one vector for each sample and each vector has 10 probabilities because we have 10 classes. <laughs> uh, and we see the labels for those 10 samples and we see the predictions and all of them are correct. So now this looks very fake. <laughs> All right, let's run this again. Ah, we have one mistake, yeah? Because we have only 92% accuracy. So, you know, on average, we should have one one wrong out of 10, okay? More to it. And so if we look at the ECS console, well, obviously we see that task running. Yeah, it's here. Nice and happy. It's not doing much at the moment, but hey, see? You can see all this information here if you want, right? But as you know, I am not much of a console guy. So this is how you do it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a few things. And I'll see you soon with another video. Bye-bye.